All right, so you've come here to see if your code reading was good and you actually made sense of what the code was coding. So this is the first one here. This was detonator. Uh, you can see here I have three detonators here. I think they were called bases. And basically the way the program works is when I hit the M key, it's supposed to make a landmine. But you can see here it's not making any landmines. That's good because that global variable I have nothing selected yet, and part of the instruction was don't make a mine unless there's a base that's been selected. So when I actually do left click on a base, let's say this one, now when I hit M, it makes mines no problem. And all those mines belong to this detonator base over here. And so you can see here if I right click, all the mines belonging to that base explode. Poof. Fun. Now the nice thing is, is I've clicked that base. That's the currently selected base. If I click this base and make some mines here, click that base, make some mines there. All those mines have an owner. And so if I right click this, all its mines blow up. If I right click this, all its blow up. And if I right click this, that blow up. That's sort of nice there because what happens is you have games with multiple players or different objects. Obviously, you can have the same object, like a mine, but the mine still knows that it belongs to another object, right? There's some ownership there. So it's one use of IDs in doing this little task. All right, here's the solution for the mother coin problem. Let's just give it a fresh run here. You're going to see right off the bat, when those mother coins are created, each one creates a bunch of random coins around it. <coughs> so you'll see here, obviously, you can tell which ones belong to which, just to make it obvious. And the neat thing is, is these coins are draggable. If I click, once I click it, it's now being dragged. And if I go near another coin or a mother coin or another coin, nothing happens. But if I go to its coin that made it, poof, it destroys. Now, when it's being destroyed, there's also something that's happening. A counter's being changed, keeping track how many have been click and dragged in. And when all the coins that belong to that mother coin are gone, poof, that mother coin's gone. So, I mean, here we're just doing something like click and dragging them. But remember, you could be shooting them down or picking them up, moving them somewhere. But it's sort of the idea of this is a group, and I'm easily able to detect when the group is done. Maybe give bonus points, maybe uh, something else happens at that stage, but it's a nice little effect there. Same types of objects, poof, and we're good. Uh, one of the keys there that you probably saw in the code is really this variable here, number of coins, and I've set it equal to six. Now after it goes in, it makes the six coins, You'll see here that every mother coin knows it had six coins. And then in the coin here, every time it hits a mother coin, you probably figured out that any time it detects that it's hit its own mother coin based on the ID, that it decreases the number coins variable by one. And of course, if it hits zero, that means that all six coins have been destroyed. Right? And with the mum, destroy it. So that's the mother coin challenge, or at least that's what it looks like when you actually go and run it. All right, the instructions said this one was tricky. This is actually a problem that we used to do in AP computer science. Um, it's related to a topic in programming called linked lists. Uh, you can go read about it on Wikipedia if you want. But what I've done here is I've basically done a little linked list of mine so that when I start clicking with my left button it's remembering the order so if you remember that and then remember this and remember that and remember this and remember that every mine that I make has a variable built inside of it and the variable knows what the next mine is that was added so this mine knows the next mine is that one and this one knows the next mine is that one. And this one knows the next mine is that one. In addition, you probably saw the code that remembered. That's the very first mine 
And I forget where I put my last mine, but wherever the last mine is, we also have a variable that keeps track of what the last mine is. And basically, when I hit the right button, bam, it blows them up. And each one blows up and then tells the next mine that was made to also detonate. So in that way, you can make a little chain, right click, blow them up. So remember, they're not blowing up because they're close together. They're blowing up because of the order that they were made in. Okay, and again, that idea was a linked list. So it's a neat little idea. Okay, tricky probably code to understand, but if you actually went through it really carefully and followed along, you'll see here some of the key pieces, right? Every mine keeps track of the next mine. That way, when this mine blows up, when its alarm goes off, it can say, hey, if the next mine variable is set to an instance that actually exists in the room, then with next mine, turn its alarm on. And when its alarm ticks down, boom, it'll blow up, right? And so that's sort of perfect. And we also change the first mine variable to equal the next mine, because since I just blew myself up, or I'm about to, technically this isn't the first mine anymore. The next mine is going to be the first mine in the game. And this cycle just keeps going and going and going until we hit a mine that has negative 4 still set as its next mine. And then that won't happen, this won't happen, and the mine will just blow up, and then that's that. Perfect, right? It's a great little, uh, great little one there. Probably worked your brain a bit. Anyways, that's the chain reaction one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, those three didn't cause you too much grief, but it's good exercise, right? Just to read code and try to gather what the program is doing.